Sunday, the big day of the referendum, the day everybody in Crimea has been waiting for, for all of two weeks. Some people would say that maybe two weeks isn't enough time to prepare a national referendum about separating for the, from the country that you've been a part of for the last 70 odd years. Um, but uh, it's happening today and here we are. This is a pretty busy polling station. We're in the middle of Simferopol, the Crimean capital. People are coming in, casting their ballots. They've got clear ballot boxes there. The uh, elections commission at that end and the lists of voters over here. This is like a local school, but they've got ballots open all over Crimea right now. According to the Ukrainian Central Authorities and the international community, this referendum is completely illegal and an act of separatism. But I think the people here in Crimea really don't care. Can I ask you, for who you will vote? That is, for what you will vote? For the United States. Why? Because we want to live better. Everything will change in our lives. We are one. А за кого вы, то есть за что вы проголосовали? За наших. Что это значит? За Россию. Почему? Потому что они лучше, чем Украина. А, да? Конечно. И вы надеетесь на что теперь? На лучшее. А вас как ущемляют? Да, вас понимаете, как, лично? как может Украина называться государством, если она страна вор? Что она украла? Это страна вор. А что она украла? У меня муж умер, пять лет будет 27 марта. Я с его книжки, у него несчастный 6 тысяч гривен. Мне до сих пор 500 гривен не выдали на погребение. А -а -а. Сказали, Юля отменила этот указ. Кто такой Юля? Воровка и бандитка. Это страна, в которой я живу. Да будь она проклята. За соединение с Россией как бы. Почему? Ну, Украина сейчас в нехорошем положении, при власти шайка преступников, на мой взгляд. Собрали вокруг себя быдло и пытаются как-то восстановить власть. Первый, первый, за Россию. А почему? Ну, потому что я хочу, чтобы... Да, потому что мы русские, я хочу, чтобы мы были с Россией. Uh, to be honest, there were no uh, troops on the streets in Crimea. So yesterday I came from, from Yalta. There were no some soldiers or tanks. Uh, the information that people voted or wanted to join Russia under uh, control or under pressure, it, it, it's not true. People are really Russians. People uh, have uh, relatives in we, Russia. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. We filmed. Lots of lo we were told they were local militias that had just sprung up spontaneously. They were people who were in trucks which had Moscow number plates. They all wore identical uniforms with their uh, regiments covered up. We filmed this. Th that's not coincidence, surely. That's straining credulity to say that these are just, you know, a few people who've borrowed some uniforms. They were official Russian forces. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's also... Um uh, Sevastopol is a big Russian military base and it's uh, crowded and full of Russian military forces but they they also stay sort of legally there that's kind of uh, I think it's also sort of mixture here I, I understand because, that I understand that I because in reality the whole story did not start with the Crimea did not start even with Russia it's not the Russia who suddenly started this crisis and actually um, it's, uh, the, it's uh, the new government it's a new government which now sits in Kiev. The first thing which they did, it, you, you remember, last time we met in your studio, I mean, my relatives and nobody in Crimea, they did not want to join to Russia. They did not want to annex. They hoped that they, uh, they got rid of their corrupted uh, President Yanukovych and now something new will happen. But what they will see, this, we saw that the people who were in the power in 2004, who, are, uh, who actually created this orange revolution, they again came to the power. But in addition, they brought Nazis, neo-fascists, Xenophobians, they immediately forbidden uh, Russian language. They started to, to give threats 
that's what actually happened. That's why it, it became hysteria. And actually, the government itself pushed people to, to join together to take this decision in Crimea and to ask Russia, uh, president of Russia, government of Russia, to help and to protect. It's not like we are Crimeans. Suddenly, we decided out of why we would not start now joining the the Russia. No, it's not what it's but, not what we wanted. Uh, the whole Ukraine is kind of. Uh, country, almost all the people are Russians or mixed people like me, half Ukrainians, half Russians. The very, very western part of Ukraine is, uh, is still, I mean, the people there, I want to believe that they don't hate Russians, they don't hate us, they don't want to kill us, but the people who came to the government, that's the problem. They created this hysteria, they created this atmosphere, they banned Russian. How they could ban Russian where 20 million people speak Russian? And if, what, I mean, what, 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 I and all the people in Crimea and, I, and I, my friends in Kiev, we all wanted only one simple thing. We all wanted legitimate government in Kiev who we could vote for who we, uh, the government, who would represent the, um, the opinion, the interest of all people of different nationalities of this country. How, but now it's a small little group with private weird interests, which absolutely don't correspond to the whole Ukraine. And, and it's if this government would not stop it, if it would not be substituted, it would be a horrible situation. I mean, Crimea, it's only such a small, small and okay. first part. And in other pieces in big towns, now they will ask for their referendums. They will all run to Russians. Uh, to who they would ri uh, run? Because they're Russians, they're running to Russians. Right. If they would be Polish, they would run to Polish. А а вот если это надо, мы... если а надо что? будет, мы будем ними. Мы... Дело в том, что если Нет, надо не будет, не мы не станем не ними. Скажите, а вот чем вам не нравится Европа? Мы в Европу. А что там может и нравиться? Нет, мы... Мы... Гендерный фашизм, гомосексуальные браки, это может и нравиться. Everyone I've ever talked to in Kiev and Maidan is convinced that everybody here is completely brainwashed. Everyone that I speak to here is convinced that everyone in Kiev is totally brainwashed. Мы не, не, не за того, что мы там за Россию или там мы хотим за отделение. Вопрос в том, чтобы люди жили при любом правительстве, пусть это будет правительство, оно будет нормальное. Чтобы они могли высказать свое мнение и его услышали. Его же не нас, слышат. Ну, нас, нас до Киева слышат. никто не услышит. Нас просто не слышат. I, I, I asked again, do you want to be uh, part of Russia or do you want to be part of Ukraine? And, uh, again, I said it's a wrong question. We just want order. Надо сначала навести порядок. А, ну, если я фермер, я покупаю э, дистопливо 15.30, которое сто, стоило 8 гривен. Оно в два раза поднялось, это на 100% все подорожало. Пришла вот эта новая власть, она же просто не владеет ситуацией. Вот что обидно. Олег хочет показать мне несколько видео, которые он говорит, что они делают его, и люди в Киеве очень злятся. Это он говорит, что мы видим на Russian TV. Эта семья очень интересная, потому что, unlike most people that we talk to at demonstrations, pro-Russian demonstrations in Dodetsk, in Lugansk, they watch Ukrainian television as well as Russian TV, and they say that they are making a very conscious choice. And here to be with Russia, and here is why. Вот это не сепаратизм. Это школа, да? Это школа киевская. Олег, это дети. Нормально разговаривай. Олег. Тише. They're shouting, hang the Russians, hang the Russians. So he says, and now, and you're telling me where the separatists, where the bad guys? Повесить трусы. How do you, how do you think that makes us feel? Олег, вот если Россия ведет войска. Не ведет Россия войска. Никогда в жизни. Она, мы просим, Россия не может вести Потому войска. Потому что если. сразу Америка предъявит Почему? аннексию. Потому что Америка предъявит аннексию, чтобы не разразилась Третья мировая война. Мы на грани Третьей мировой войны.